Hello and welcome to this episode of Building the Kana Guitar and today I'm going to show you how I made these uh, nice golden frets and how I knock them in, how I make like these uh, ball shaped fret ends, uh, how I level them, polish them, everything you need to know. Okay, so the first step is to cut the fret wire into the uh, appropriate length, length and I'm going to use Maybe like that. Use my, use my finger to uh, push it up to the edge and then just and there it goes. And cut in about to the length that you need. It's good to have it a little bit bigger. And if you happen to cut it like a little bit too big, you can just move it up a couple of threads and and later you can uh, adjust it as well. If a thread is a little bit too short, you move it a little bit down. If it's a little bit too long, you move it up. And yeah, so I'm going to cut these. It's always good if you leave like one, one or two free that are smaller than you need. And because you can always make them shorter and it's hard to make them longer. Okay, so here's a little tip. I'm gonna set back the uh, tanks of the frets so uh, later when I'm gonna knock them in, they're not gonna stand out and the fretboard is uh, routed out so uh, we don't have these uh, yeah, uh, saw cuts on the sides. And uh, yeah, because it doesn't look so good. And normally you use like a special tool to. Uh, remove like this, this edge of the base of the fret here and I'm going to use my bolt sander for this so what I'm going to do is uh, I put on a old, old piece of sandpaper and then I'm going to use this to basically remove this bit of uh, material Okay, so maybe you can see it. I've uh, nipped off the tang <laughs> now of this thread, and uh, now I'm gonna do the other side and uh, on all 22 threads. So I like this method. Just one side, press this down.
so now that, that I've knocked in the frets, I'm gonna clamp it in here. And some of them are a little bit too long, so I'm gonna uh, sand them flush. flush. I can start um, uh, shaping the fret ends and what I'm doing so as you can see here I try to make like a perfect ball end and you might know that uh, normally uh, luthiers just go with the file like this and have like a 45 degree or 30 degree or whatever angle and then um, going with the file like this and it's ready and uh, and done and uh, I don't want to yeah it's it's a little bit too simple for me Okay, so it's time to uh, shape the fret ends and uh, what I'm doing, uh, I'd like to uh, make a nice ball end to the frets and uh, what you usually have is that um, you luthiers or the more manufacturers uh, just putting like a 45 degree angle on it and then um, they go over it and take, a, take the edge off and um, I like the ball end much better. Uh, it's much more work, but uh, you really, really feel it. That um, yeah, you don't feel anything. Like you don't uh, have like any sharp edges or anything. And uh, additional to that, uh, it looks looks the best. So I think uh, when it all comes together, um, the people are, uh, are looking most of the time on the fretboard because that's where they are playing. And when they're approaching a guitar, they, the first thing that uh, uh, as, uh, they, they see is like the frets, and I want to make them uh, as nice as possible. And uh, I'm going to show you how, how to do it. And basically, the only tool you're going to need is this uh, file, and it's like uh, has two blind sides and. Uh, one one uh, corrosive side and it's like a triangular file and a little bit flat and uh, it's uh, it allows me to go like really nice into this edge here to to work out the material and that's basically what I do I go from side to side. Sometimes I approach from here. Depends on what's much uh, most comfortable. And I try to not uh, hit the fret fretboard too much. Um, Sometimes it happens that I scratch a little bit, but on the edges I'll, I'll uh, sand off anyway. Or, uh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. And also, I want to uh, have the thread retracted a little bit. So, this will also uh, add to the comfort. So, when your finger's going over it, it's not, uh, yeah, hanging on it. So there's like half a millimeter. It's, it's uh, like retracted. Just 
just like that and uh, I try to have like still this this high point here uh, quite close to the edge so the the active surface where you can can play when you bend the strings um, you want to have like it as much as possible and uh, yeah it's it's not not much different from uh, like the traditional 45 degree angle I would argue uh, you have a little bit more space to work and at the end I'm, I'm gonna use like these thread rubbers and they're really nice because they basically they, they polish the uh, the frets and don't uh, scratch the fretboard What you also could do is uh, take a relatively highly grit, high grit sandpaper like this one. It's like 320 or so. And it's quite worked up. And just use your finger and uh, the finger will kind of uh, bend it over there and uh, so you it touches the, the thread end like from all sides and it's like uh, water in the river washing the stone it's like my finger uh, washing the uh, thread end round and then you can be come back with the thread rubber and there's like different grades Later I'm gonna use it like this, like over all the frets at once. And move it up a little bit. This is like the super fine. Rid of the dust and yeah that's basically how I do it and now I have to repeat it like 40 more times and then I'm done So what I like to do um, when I uh, shape these threads, I like to do them rough the first round and then go over them like uh, several times. But um, yeah, it's much faster to just stay the same position. First do this, this side and then later turn around and do the other one.
I'm using the file like this to basically go under there and uh, yeah, set back the fret ends a little bit and uh, make sure that they are all uh, aligned. So when I when I look over it, there's like no no waves in it. It's like nice and straight. went over all the frets and made sure that um, they're set back like equally both sides like a nice straight line and they're like uh, half a millimeter from the fret edge so yeah, you don't see anything. And now I think I'm going to use this uh, piece of uh, 240 grit and my thumb to work the fretboard edge because I got some scratches on it and also work the uh, ball ends of course. And I haven't uh, leveled the fretboard, so it doesn't matter if I scratch the top. It's gonna be uh, sanded down anyway. They have like the most sketches. Them out a little bit. And you actually you don't play outside here, so the string is like set back like four milli uh, three millimeters, and uh, yeah, it's like the first millimeter that I'm gonna uh, work down a little bit. And it also is gonna make the uh, fretboard feel much more comfortable when you don't have like the sharp edge here. So I would do this anyway. Also with the palm of your hand. It's a really nice sanding block. <laughs> Okay, now that I've uh, used the sandpaper to make the edges nice and round, I'm going to use the thread rubber to uh, basically polish it. And as you can see, it, it's got these uh, 
uh, these grooves on it so from from doing this <laughs> and yeah, basically run it up and down the edge maybe like this so it gets into the uh, corners here a little bit better Great, a little bit finer one. Now the final grade. And yeah, that's basically it for now. And later I'm gonna level the fretboard and after that I will have to go over the edges a little bit more again and uh, so I think that's good for now I'm just going to do the other side and then uh, I can continue carving the neck Okay, now for the fret leveling part, and uh, I've already made the uh, fret ends, and now I'm gonna make sure that the frets are all leveled. And first, I want to check if they're like the the general condition, and uh, looks pretty good. And I use my own ruler for this, and you can at this stage um, fasten or loosen the uh, truss rod to maybe uh, make make up for a little bit of uh, bending of the neck. And yeah, this looks uh, pretty good. And um, before I start uh, leveling, I need to uh, tape off the fretboard so it doesn't get uh, dirty. And just gonna use tape like that. And for the ones that don't fit perfectly, you just just like just drive one on one side and on the other. That should fit here. Ah, it's a little bit difficult because of the fat front. Um, yeah, so I'll do that and uh, I'm back in a minute. Now that I've uh, taped the fretboard, I can now use uh, this pen or this marker to uh, mark the frets and yeah that's like the main reason you want to protect your fretboard because you don't want to uh, mark your fretboard so there I slipped and uh, would have uh, a bad time getting that back again and the reason I'm marking the fretboard is I'm gonna use a 
profile with some sandpaper on it to um, flatten it and I'm gonna see where I'm actually removing the material um, when I'm removing the material I'm gonna remove the uh, marker and then I'm gonna see where, where I'm actually removing and um, I'm gonna do that until uh, every fret uh, I've touched every fret with the uh, this uh, aluminium profile and uh, then I'll uh, recrown the fret uh, crown. So important thing is to follow the uh, path of the string, so to say. So the string is going like this, and this, the string is going more like this. So you don't want to always sand like this. So go like like in a in a cone cone shape because. Uh, also, my fretboard is um, it's got a compound radius, so the radius here is more flat, and and then here, and um, that's also why I want to make like a, a pass for every string, like different. pass and I see it removes a lot at the ends so it means it's like uh, concave shaped so I'm gonna use my truss rod to get it back a little And uh, one thing to point out is uh, I'm using, I'm doing this like in the, the raw state of the neck, and the neck is much more stiff now. It's a good thing because uh, when I'm <coughs> sanding over the uh, fretboard, it's not like when I clamp it like this, it isn't isn't bending down on the sides. So. Um, and it's it's easier to clamp to clamp the neck uh, in this state, so that's why I'm doing it. Uh, but you gotta be careful with the uh, truss rod because uh, yeah, I once uh, broke a truss rod actually because yeah, it's so stiff and uh, you can hear it. It's it's like barely moving. Uh, yeah, but now I continue. I mark these uh, frets again. I removed some material and then try again. Very light pressure, and now I see I removed, uh, yeah, basically everywhere, just not here. The last ones seem to be quite high. Um, yeah, but very little pressure. Barely the um, weight of the aluminium is uh, almost enough. Pretty good. On this side. That was a little low spot, and then we go sometimes a little hard to see, but yeah, more in this area. So I want to try and uh, Try shorter, shorter profile. So I work it a little bit more down like this. Okay, now I'm 
it, or almost all of them. And it's like one left. Seems like I touched all of them. Um, now what I want to do is uh, I want to mark them again and then uh, crown them using this uh, thread crowning file. And uh, yeah, it's got like round a concave shape. And I'm gonna use to remove uh, those scratches. Okay, I've marked the threads and they should be leveled, but they have like a flat crown now, so I need to bring back the crown. And what I like to do is I yeah, just start here in the middle and just barely touch them and uh, when, the, uh, when you don't see any marker anymore, um, yeah, it should be good. And sometimes it's just like in the middle is like a little bit of marker, and you just let it like this, because the most important thing is that you don't go too deep, because you want all the frets leveled. And if one's deeper, then the next one's gonna cause bus, and then you gotta lower the next one, and then the next one, next one, basically you have to go all over again. And so that's the main concern here is not to work uh, too fast. So in this case, lower is uh, better and faster. Also, the east, these are like grass threads, and I think, or I feel that they they are much much easier to work. Usually, I need uh, I use uh, stainless steel threads, and yeah, it takes much longer. <coughs> and I did take off uh, quite quite little. Okay, now for the uh, fret leveling, and I got uh, this tool here, and it's a piece of flat metal, and I'm using it to basically rock back and forth. It's also called a fret rocker, and uh, I hold it so that uh, it's placed over three frets, and then I push down like here and on the left and the right, and yeah, and this one you can see it's like rocking back and forth, and you hear a noise if I you move it a little bit here. It is, it's got here, but not here and here, so that means I need to move material here and here. Just uh, starting in the middle and making sure these three are flat. And then go up and down and um, basically go from inside out. Um, I think it's it's uh, better than starting at one, one side and going to the other, because when you start here and uh, you lower one fret way too much, you make a mistake. It it it, it uh, starts like a cascade, so you <laughs> you will have to uh, kind of uh, make up for it uh, every every consecutive fret. So uh, 
if you, if you got it, like any inconsistencies, uh, might be a little bit lower in the middle, like slightly, and uh, that's also good because uh, you want these um, the neck to have like a little bit of a, a bend later because you want to have like the relief, and uh, it's better if there's already a little bit of a relief in there, and uh, so. Yeah, that's basically why I'm starting in the middle. <coughs> and what I also like to do is to mark the um, fretboard a little bit so uh, you know where you've uh, worked. And if you look away or uh, go to the toilet or whatever, then come back and um, or you, you, you rock here and think you need to remove here, but remove on the wrong spot, it's it's like really bad. So, these markers help to know where you've been, where you have to work. Not rocking here anymore, and here, and but still in, in the middle a little bit. Okay, this one's good. And one thing to mention maybe is uh, I needed to. Um, <clears throat> make this one actually flat because uh, first it was like bent in uh, like like this and so I basically I used this file to to make it uh, nice and flat and like true and also make like a little bit of a crown of, on it I think that helps too and then you gotta uh, make sure you are still uh, following the lines of the fret. So you're rocking here like this, and there a little bit more on this angle. And yeah, it's just like that because if I'm holding it like this, it's rocking, and now it's not rocking anymore. So that's also important to keep in mind. You can. So switch to the shorter side if it gets shorter and it's basically it. you go all the way up and then go back down and then you double check on every fret and if you don't have any rocking anymore you can start uh, polishing the uh, crowns. Okay one more thing as I approach the uh, higher frets um, Normally on uh, on acoustic guitars you have a um, neck and then you have like the heel here and you have got the transition to the body from like normally uh, traditionally the, the th um, 12th fret or the 14th fret and what happens is um, that normally you don't have like this uh, extended neck here so it's it's like it's like cut away here and you basically only have the fretboard and then you have like those braces and what happens is that the uh, over time um, the neck will come up and um, these, uh, the upper transverse brace will press against the fretboard and lift it up a little bit so uh, what you normally gonna do is um, you're gonna um, adjust for that and basically from the neck joint to the end you're gonna make like a little um, downward uh, ramp like um, you take take like these uh, fret leveling uh, files and then go and work them down from the 12th or 14th fret to uh, make up for that, uh, but uh, 
I never had really much that of that problem. Like it's a little bit um, the the bending point is still like here at the uh, I think 13th fret or so, and but it's it's not that that much. So um, yeah, I don't uh, have to uh, be worried about that at the moment. And yeah, just continue with the higher frets. And also, when I'm at the high frets, I tend to grab it like this, and then you can really easily uh, see if it's blocking or not. So here it's, here it's stable, and here it's like got a really sensitive uh, tool here. Okay, it's now only in the middle. And when it's hard to kind of, uh, yeah, when you don't have so much experience with the, the file, um, only sending the middle, you can use like the tip of it and hold in a higher angle and then just scrape here. Okay, so it seems good. And what I'm doing now is I'm, um, yeah, I'm starting at the front and checking every thread again. Make sure the thread rocker always is aligned to like check for basically every string. Okay, seems good. And now it's ready to polish. Alright, so now I'm ready uh, to polish the frets. They are all uh, crowned and have the nice uh, ball lines. And uh, now I just need to polish them up. And what I like to do is I use like one of these uh, abrasive pads and just the thread direction, just go over there slightly.
and now I'd like to use some steel wool um, and I've put like a little little magnet in there so uh, yeah the steel wool attaches so uh, it stays like in this place and yeah it's a little little trick so you don't have like steel wool particles flying all over the place and if there is like something some piece flying off just attach it to the magnet again and yeah it's also lasting much longer Okay, you know that I'm done with the uh, steel wool. I will continue with my flap rubbers. And the important thing here is also to just go like in the direction of the threads. And it will make them look much, much shinier than if you go this direction. They uh, look quite dull so you want the super tiny scratches be in the direction of the thread and yeah it will make it look shiny and that's what we want so I'm gonna use the thread rollers to uh, basically work my way up And for the final touch, I will use uh, this metal polishing compound and a, a simple uh, polishing wheel like this on my uh, electric drill to uh, give them a final gloss. And now I'm gonna remove a little bit of the dirt from the uh, polishing process. So this, uh, despite the efforts, uh, came through to the fruit board. I'm just using a clean rag and some alcohol to wipe that off. Use it like this to get underneath the or in between the uh, thread ends. And yeah, that's basically it. That's the finished track board. And yeah, that's about how it's gonna look when the oil is coming on. I really like this uh, plum, and I hope you enjoyed this. And see you next time.